uncover the previously unpublished lectures by Neville Goddard that reveal the transformative power of faith and action. Are you ready to revolutionize your life by acting upon your deepest beliefs? This video will guide you on a journey towards discovering the greatness that resides within you. Don't miss this opportunity to embark on a path towards unleashing your true potential. Join us as we delve into some of Neville Goddard's radio lectures from the 1950s, which have remained unrecorded and unshared on the internet until now. Today's discussion centers around recognizing and embracing one's own inherent greatness. Sit back, relax, and immerse yourself in the profound insights of one of the great visionaries. Neville Goddard emphasized that what truly matters is not merely what you think, but what you feel deeply in your core. You can spend countless hours contemplating an action without actually taking the necessary steps to bring it to fruition. However, when something touches you on a profound level, you are compelled to act, and it is in that moment that God, the source of all life, acts through the power of feeling. You could entertain a myriad of possibilities without committing to any particular course of action. A sincere and deep-rooted feeling carries far more weight than any fleeting thought. Asking with unwavering faith, without a hint of hesitation, is of utmost importance, for the one who doubts is like a wave tossed and swayed by the wind. That individual should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Instead, we must be doers of the word, not merely listeners who deceive ourselves. If you only listen without taking action, you are akin to someone who gazes at their reflection in a mirror, only to walk away and promptly forget what they look like. But if you act in accordance with the word and refuse to be a forgetful listener, you will gaze into that perfect law of liberty and persevere. That person will be blessed in all their endeavors. How can one become a doer and not just a passive listener? By acting with unwavering faith. The central figure of the Bible, Jesus, never placed limitations on God's love or the power of faith. All his remarkable works were preceded by the words, according to your faith. Faith encompasses feeling. If you possess faith, you will take action, and when you act, it is God within you who acts, for God is your own marvelous human imagination, whose eternal name is I am. He only acts when you feel it deeply. This principle applies even to the most practical aspects of life. If I share my aspiration with you and you advise me to go my way as if I have already achieved it, and for a moment, I perceive the world from that perspective as if it were a tangible reality, but then I stray and forget that vision, I become a forgetful listener. However, if I persist in my acting and not merely listening, I remain in the state where everything is possible through the power of the word. When you look in a mirror, you see your own reflection, but there is another mirror in which you can gaze, the mirror of your friends. If they are aware of your good news, would they not reflect the reality that your desire has already come to fruition? Feel the solidity and reality of it, and allow your friends to see you in that elevated state. They serve as your living mirror. Now, persevere in that state and refrain from deviating by quickly forgetting who you truly are. Step through this door tonight, assuming that you are already the person you aspire to be. It matters not if the external world denies it, you have witnessed the expression on your friends' faces and heard their congratulations internally with unwavering faith. Now, carry this feeling deep within you, unalterable and steadfast. Approach a living mirror of friends and acquaintances who have received your good news and accepted it as a permanent reality. Observe your reflection in them. If they truly love you, you will see their joy radiating back at you. They will celebrate your good fortune with genuine enthusiasm. Now, persist in that consciousness and do not forget what you have seen in your living mirror. If you do so, you will be blessed in all your actions, as indicated in the first chapter of the book of Psalms, blessed is the individual who delights in the law of the Lord, for in all that they undertake, they shall prosper. Did you not liberate yourself from your past by witnessing your friend's face reflecting what you wanted them to see? If you left behind the state of poverty, sickness, or weakness and transitioned to the state of wealth, healing, or strength, and your friends were aware of it, you would have been freed from your previous limitations. Thus, by gazing into the perfect law of liberty and persevering, you are blessed in all your actions. I speak to you from personal experience, this principle works, but it is we who wield the power, it does not operate independently. You may have heard this law and read about it in a book, 
But have you verified its effectiveness through your own experience? Have you put it to the test? If you have, then you can speak with an authority that you did not possess before. Can I assure you that by applying this law, you will be completely liberated? I have found myself in numerous situations where I was compelled to prove this principle. During my stay on the small island of Barbados, with only two small ships connecting it to the hundreds of nearby islands, I made a commitment to deliver a series of lectures in Milwaukee by May 1st. When I contacted the travel agent, he informed me that due to the limited capacity of the ships departing from New York and Boston, there were no tickets available until after September 1st. He assured me that he would place my name on the waiting list, but he offered no hope since the list was extensive. I hung up the phone, sat in my chair in the hotel room, closed my eyes, and assumed that I was on a ship heading to New York. I imagined that eight or ten members of my family were accompanying me and that my brother Victor was carrying my little daughter. I could feel the gentle sway of the ship, and although I had not booked a cabin, I remained on deck, placing my imaginary hands on the railing and feeling the sea salt on them. Then, I looked back nostalgically at the small island. I repeated this action over and over, feeling each step I took on that gangway. I felt the railing and smelled the sea salt. I did everything I would have done if I were actually there, and when my action felt natural and effortless, I stopped. The following day, I received a call informing me that I would be sailing on a ship that would arrive in New York a week before my commitment in Milwaukee. When I inquired how the agent had managed to secure the ticket, he explained that there had been a cancellation in New York and that the only person he had called on the waiting list considered it inconvenient at that time. Knowing that he could accommodate my wife, my little daughter, and me in a cabin, he allowed us to board. I never knew the reason behind the cancellation in New York, why the person they called in Barbados could not take the ship at that time, or why the agent did not contact others on the waiting list. All I know is that I received the ticket I had imagined. I have shared this story before, and on one occasion, someone in the audience asked, was that a Christian thing to do? You could have caused someone to cancel their trip. But I tell you, as I told her, that it was the only Christian thing to do, for I applied the Christian principle to fulfill God's law. How it was going to be fulfilled was not my concern. I am told that whatever I desire, if I believe I have received it, I will have it. God never creates a desire in the human heart without having already prepared its satisfaction. This holds true for every desire in this world, as well as for the greatest of all desires, which is the thirst for God. If you truly yearn for an experience of God, apply this principle towards it. Do what I did when I wanted to leave Barbados and come to America. I looked into the perfect law of liberty and persevered. God does not provide one law for your desires in this world and another for your search for Him. It is the same law that governs all. The journey of faith and action is a transformative one, requiring us to delve deep within ourselves and confront the beliefs and patterns that have held us back. It is a process of shedding the layers of limitation and embracing the infinite potential that resides within us. As we embark on this path, we may encounter challenges and obstacles, but these experiences serve as catalysts for growth and understanding, guiding us towards a greater realization of our true power. Faith and action are not separate entities but are intimately intertwined. True faith compels us to take action, to step out of our comfort zones and into the realm of possibility. It is through action that we bring our faith to life, manifesting our deepest desires and transforming our reality. The world we inhabit is a reflection of our inner state, and as we align our thoughts, feelings, and actions with the truth of our being, we begin to witness miraculous shifts in our external circumstances. By embodying the principles of faith and action, we become co-creators of our reality, shaping our lives in accordance with our highest vision. In conclusion, the true power of faith and action lies not in the external results we achieve but in the profound inner transformation that takes place within us. It is the recognition of our divine nature, the realization that we are not separate from the creative force of the universe but are expressions of it, living in a world of our own making. By awakening to this truth, we unlock the door to a life of boundless possibility, where our deepest desires and aspirations become our living reality. Let us embrace this journey of faith and action with courage and determination, knowing that we are divinely guided and supported every step of the way. 
let us trust in the power of our own imagination, for it is through our imagination that we access the infinite wisdom and creativity of the universe. This is the pivotal moment to transform dreams into tangible reality. As Shakespeare eloquently stated, assume a virtue if you have it not. It is of utmost importance to truly feel a virtue in order to embody it fully. Refrain from succumbing to mere assumptions for tonight, and you will come to realize that it becomes easier to do so in the coming week, and even more effortless as time progresses. However, if you firmly believe that your desire has already been fulfilled and maintain that unwavering conviction until you feel it resonating within your very being, it will undoubtedly manifest as a concrete fact in the external world. I extend an invitation to everyone to apply this approach. Every longing carries within it the promise of its own fulfillment, it rests solely upon you to nurture it. You have the power to choose whether to focus on the absence of what is desired or to embrace the gratitude for its realization. God is the source of all your desires, whether they be worldly or spiritual in nature. It is not a mere longing for sustenance or hydration, but a deep yearning to hear the word of God. When you aspire to spread the divine message, it is not the teaching itself that you seek, but rather the recognition and admiration that it brings. And that, too, has been bestowed upon you. Every desire can be satisfied if you focus on the law of liberty and persevere in its application. You will be blessed in every action you undertake. Recently, a man from New York paid me a visit. Upon hearing him, I refrained from revealing my initial impression and instead chose to listen further. This individual, who previously held a position in the Department of Antiquities at Macy's, has been imparting teachings within one of those Eastern movements. Now, a group of followers, lacking the ability to believe in themselves, have implored him to assume the role of their leader. Knowing his true desire saddened me, as he was merely seeking attention, but nonetheless, I bestowed my blessing upon him. He has grown weary of playing a secondary role under the shadow of a leader who has amassed a fortune at the expense of those who invest in illusions. These followers, possessing nothing, have built a paradise for their leader, acquiring valuable properties and constructing upon them, celebrating his generosity with lavish ceremonies, yet everything remains in the leader's name. In 1943, this same man confessed to me that his sole purpose in coming to New York was to attain wealth through the New Thought Movement. Upon hearing this, I pondered that he had chosen the wrong profession if his aspiration was to accumulate a great fortune. He could have opted for more lucrative ventures, such as oil or coal. While this work can provide a comfortable existence, it will not lead to the accumulation of vast wealth. Now, he has managed to amass riches, owns properties, and a towering building in New York, all financed by those willing to be exploited. The man who visited me contributed to this leader's success, and although recognizing his falsehood, he still yearns for recognition. Now, a new opportunity for obtaining it presents itself. I pray for his success, not as a teacher, for I do not consider him one, but for the prestige he will gain from those seeking emptiness, promoting an ascetic lifestyle. Although his request does not contravene my moral principles, I can envision him achieving his goal. However, I urge those who are sincere to seek the deepest desire of all, to know God through direct experience. Gaze upon your loved ones and affirm your faith with unwavering conviction, persevering, for God has provided the satisfaction for that search. If you do not yet feel that profound longing but sincerely seek a better life, there is nothing wrong with it. Apply the same principle of the perfect law of liberty and persist. Once you have acted, do not turn away or forget what was done but sleep with that conviction, and in unexpected ways, it will materialize. Today, many are absent due to Memorial Day, but I assure you there is no moment or place more sacred than another. Wherever you stand, you are on holy ground. While millions commemorate the fallen, I speak of eternal life and the awakening to divine reality. I cannot pay tribute in a cemetery to what is no longer there. The body may lie in the grave, but the spirit transcends. The story of Isaac and his sons, Esau and Jacob, narrated in the book of Genesis, illustrates the profound importance of faith and conviction. By wrapping yourself in the feeling of having realized your desire, you have taken an irrevocable step towards its manifestation. Prayer is the materialization of hope, the act of giving it concrete existence. 
By nurturing that feeling, you are clothing your desire with reality, ensuring its fulfillment. The true blessing lies in giving your hope a tangible form. Jacob represents your desire waiting to come to life. By assuming that feeling is real, you are blessing your subjective state, ensuring its manifestation in the external world. Isaac's blindness symbolizes our inability to directly perceive our desires as fulfilled, but by clothing ourselves with the certainty of their fulfillment, we touch the essence of what it means to be satisfied. Feed this feeling constantly, and inexplicably, your desire will manifest in your reality. The journey of transforming dreams into reality is a deeply personal and transformative experience that requires us to delve into the depths of our being and confront the beliefs and patterns that have kept us bound. It is a process of shedding the layers of conditioning and limitation that have obscured our true desires, allowing the light of our authentic self to shine forth. As we embark on this path, we may encounter challenges and obstacles, but these experiences serve as catalysts for growth and understanding, guiding us towards a greater realization of our creative power. Embodying virtue is not a singular event but an ongoing process of alignment, a continuous unfolding of our deepest desires. Each moment presents an opportunity to choose love over fear, abundance over lack, and to align ourselves with the divine flow that permeates all of existence. As we do so, we begin to witness the miracles and synchronicities that are the hallmarks of a life lived in alignment with our true nature. The world we inhabit is a reflection of our inner state, and as more individuals awaken to their creative potential, we have the power to transform our planet into a place of peace, harmony, and abundance. By embodying the principles of love, compassion, and unity, we become beacons of light, inspiring others to embark on their own journey of self-discovery and transformation. In conclusion, the true essence of transforming dreams into reality lies not in the external circumstances we create but in the profound inner transformation that takes place within us. It is the recognition of our divine nature, the realization that we are not separate from the creative force of the universe but are expressions of it, living in a world of our own making. By awakening to this truth, we transform our lives and the world around us, manifesting the reality we truly desire. Let us embrace this journey with courage and faith, knowing that we are divinely guided and supported. Let us open our hearts to the love and abundance that resides within us, and let us share that light with the world. Together, we can create a new reality, one that is based on love, compassion, and unity. This is the true essence of transforming dreams into reality, and it is our birthright as divine beings. As we embark on this journey of embodying virtue and transforming our dreams into reality, let us remember that we are never alone. We are part of a greater whole, a divine unity that encompasses all of creation. We are supported by the love and guidance of the universe, and we have the power to create a reality that reflects our highest truth. So let us embrace this journey with open hearts and minds, knowing that we are divinely guided and protected. Let us trust in the process of transformation, even when it feels challenging or uncomfortable. Let us remember that every experience is an opportunity for growth and expansion, and that we have the power to choose how we respond to the circumstances of our lives. As we continue on this path, let us cultivate a deep sense of self-love and self-acceptance. Let us release the need for external validation and instead turn inward, trusting in the wisdom and guidance that resides within us. Let us embrace our unique gifts and talents, and let us share them with the world in a way that feels authentic and aligned. And let us remember that transforming our dreams into reality is not a destination but a journey, a continuous unfolding of our highest potential. Each day presents new opportunities for growth and expansion, and each moment is a chance to choose love, compassion, and unity. So let us step forward with courage and faith knowing that we are supported by the infinite love and wisdom of the universe. Let us trust in the process of transformation, and let us embrace the journey with open hearts and minds. Together, we can create a world that reflects our highest truth, a world of love, compassion, and unity. This is the true essence of transforming dreams into reality, and it is our birthright as divine beings.